45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. well, seriously. We're recording. Okay. What? Who's going to watch their little Instagram video for 45 minutes? Well, the link, bro. Wait. Actually, no, it's not. I thought it was like IGTV. No. Don't what? worry about it. Don't worry no, no. about distribution strategy. Leave that to me. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're recording. Nobody, nobody cares to listen to this for okay. 45 minutes. Okay. So, Boyan said yesterday, I have a brilliant idea. Quote unquote. And then he said, we're going to get on and we're going to create the morning show. And I thought a good idea would be to call it Good Morning America. <laughs> so not a great idea. Oh, it's it's an idea, not a great idea. It's, it's copyright pending. Right. Um, so I think since I can pretty safely say that that copyright pending will be rejected, we should just go with November Project, the show. Okay. Cool. Great. So you we've been recording for the last five minutes. So there you go. Do you ever wonder when, when you use NP, do you ever wonder if you need to go back and say November Project? No. You ever just launch right into it? No, I feel I feel like, and this is super cocky, but I feel like November Project is a house. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and everyone should know. Everyone should know. I'm reading the email right now. This is also me uh, using my sarcastic language, but you can't tell because of my eyes are covered. Do we do the, um, Boyan, we talked about doing the um, shout outs at the beginning of the show. Let's do it. Um, we want to give a shout out to. Uh, oh, we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So first off, if you're tuned in. Yeah, shout out to our friends at Brooks, because this yeah. is going to take three hours if we leave it to BG. Uh -huh. um, who are keeping the wheels turning in these difficult times, right? And then our friends from Knockaround for keeping our eyes safe again yeah. in these difficult times. Any just any just general like kind of more domestic shout outs? Tech Beasley. Do well, Tech Beasley. I also want to give a shout out to my wife who also oh. is giving. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Once you start, this, this, this is going to be half ass right. shout out. Ready? I'll talk to my, my spouse next. Okay. You're, you're next. You got next. So my <laughs> wife, right. she is considered essential employee, therefore she works, right? right. That's kind of thumbs up. So that's the part that's like, good job. Is that a, is that a dig? Is that a dig at me? <laughs> no, no, no. no. But, then, but then she goes onto the Facebook and puts like a little badge. I'm working because I'm in healthcare or something along those lines. So kind of like... Yeah. Look at me. I'm an essential employee. Everybody should know that I'm an essential employee. Right, right, right. Don't judge me because I'm going to work and mingling. And then, and then what happened again? Like she has to go to work, but she couldn't go to New York City because of the virus. What was that? She can't. She has to go to work. She right has now. to go to work for the paycheck and she, she should not go anywhere. Just basically house work, house work. That's the. She works, that's she works with old people. We're not talking about the coronavirus or we are. What are we doing on this show? We're not we doing talk that. about anything. Let's okay. start. Start, let's start with uh, what your wife does for work. She sells yoga videos in a time of crisis. Yeah, how's that working? <laughs> the business booming? Uh, it is. It is. Yeah, uh, it is. Um, I think it's a lot of people that like maybe did, never did yoga, and they're like, it's like a lot. Like, I mean, you can tell even after a couple days of being cooped up, there's a lot of like fuck it vibes. Like, all right, I'll buy a bundle of yoga videos. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like a crazy time where, like, if you go on social, and by the way, Laura Green, you're off social? Temporarily. Oh, yeah, I, say, I used to say that. And um, <laughs> I remember everyone's that. Everyone's going live. Everyone's in their living rooms. Everyone's doing it. And, um, you know, there's different personalities on this little meeting here we're having, but I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Yeah, I wish the internet was a little bit better so you didn't look fuzzy. But right, why is Brogan getting all fuzz? Yeah, but you look great, Laura. Thanks. In general, but also your internet connection. Watch it. Nice work. Watch it. Watch it. Yeah. All well, right, I was so about to ask about her spouse and what he does these these times. Well, he you triggered our, he triggered our shutdown. Like, I just want to talk a little bit about how everyone's marriages are going in general. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me take my sunglasses off for that one. 
Well, you, know, you guys are both in actually kind of odd situations. Uh, well, BG for a while. Like, you're, you haven't gotten out of your schedule too much. Goldie spent a majority of her time with Lumi in the caretaker role for Lumi. Mm -hmm. And, Wayne, where are your kids? <laughs> they we'll, still get there. we'll talk yeah, about it. Vermont's still open. Vermont schools are still open, right? Well, they're outside playing in the woods. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> the bears are watching them. Yeah. But, so I am an essential employee, but I've decided not to see my patients. <laughs> Because I, I, it was an ethical decision for me. They're all over 95 years old. I thought I, my kid was going to bring them the disease on like a silver platter while yeah. I was telling them to do like air squats. But um, no, I mean, I, like, it's just so funny working from home. Both working from home. There's one child to take care of. Uh, and and every morning, yeah. start every morning with a cup of coffee and a side of passive aggression. That's just yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Who, who's meeting? What meet? What calls do you have today? Yeah, and totally. you're rising each other up. Like, whose job is more important? Well, I have a big call at eleven thirty. So, sounds big. <laughs> yeah. sounds big. Well, That's and then, cool. then I can't ever tell Connor that like I'm on a call with Brogan and Boyan because that gets downside. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah, you're working he knows us too yeah, well. You can do that at 8:30 p.m. Then. <laughs> totally, totally. So, oh man, it's, I mean, I got, I got a, I got a lot of that going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the reasons that we're doing this show is a to to, to, pass, idea. to sanity, right? To be sane. Yep. Uh, B. To provide some insight into our cooped up little lives in Cottage in Vermont, in living room in Minneapolis, and Laura, maybe on Martha's Vineyard right now? I've escaped to Cape Cod, yes. Oh, you are? You're there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what'd you do? Do you, all, you just run over the border? How did it happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let you. We didn't you get did There's like a cop every half mile. You just, you just threw some ice. They're sitting there with a thermometer laser. Yeah. They're, they're no longer checking your traffic. Speed. You're chewing on ice. So when they put the thermometer yeah. on your tongue. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. doing the tongue thermometers, not the forehead. Uh, <laughs> Roadside. Uh, 45 seconds. And they hold it. They hold it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> You know, we packed a car that has three weeks worth of food in it, which is an absurd amount of food. Yeah, that's a lot. Cool. But who knows? Maybe it's not enough. I don't know. Dude, I got to I got to say, when you talk about packing the car, and especially when we, when I think of fondly, I'm not as much shit as I talk about Boyan. Like, I love I love Boyan. Okay, there. Okay. Once a year, I say it once a year, so that's it for 2020. Um, but I think of Boyan often with the pack the car thing because I I love I'm very fond of that movie that came out like fucking 15 years ago called I Am Legend. And it's about Will Smith and the fucking end of the world. And he's like running around New York City shooting deer. And it's like the whole city has gone to shit. And he's the last guy alive on earth. So he thinks, I think. Yeah, yeah. And he's talking to himself. He's, talking a German to shepherd. he's a German shepherd. Rest in peace, Moondog. Moon and dog. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Sammy, is your dog named Sammy? Sammy. Yeah. Well, uh, inside joke there, he... he Boyan's dog passed away because it was like a thousand, but it was really cute and helpful to their family or something. But when it died, they made like a moon um, shrine that the kids would look at at night and then they would well, wait at night to the moon. Because <laughs> my daughter was three and my son was one, so we yeah. couldn't really expl explain the concept of that. Now they, they get it, I think. Well, and Emily was sad, so she needed a little moon shrine. I mean, we all need a little right. moon shrine. And then, so, so, Emily kind of like, where are we going with this? Ago, Emily said, she's on the moon. And right, so right, right, right. my mother in law, kind of like to support the lie, ended up buying like a little little LED light in the shape of a moon. Right. So then kids go to bed and they see a little moon. And now every time we get outside and there's a moon showing, both of my kids, Sammy. Right. So anyway, back to I Am Legend. Will Smith. The film is like a little bit like Castaway, where it's just him and his dialogue, and he's like losing his mind, and it's like kind of intense. And and then the very last like two minutes of the film, he is brought into this community of people in a very lush place in a gated community where everyone has guns for the zombies, and it's this colony of survivors of the world, and it's pretty much in Boyan's current neighborhood in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> I think you may be mixing couple a couple of movies there together. No, no, no. no that's the end. 
Is it? Yeah. Yeah. He because remember in the movie he thinks he's alone, he's alone. And then that woman comes in, she has a kid, and then she's yeah. like, they she are out there. What's that? She cooks bacon, he gets pissed. Right. He's saving anyway, bacon. Anyway, um, Boyan and Laura and I are all friends from Boston, and now no one lives there. Laura lives in one of the suburbs north of Boston. Boyan lives in southern Vermont. <laughs> I, live, I live in the center of the universe in the Twin Cities. So, <clears throat> Of Minneapolis. I think that entire rant is to say when this virus continues, we're all going to be in Vermont. with Boyan. And he's going to have a lot of drinking water and fucking guards with guns and moon shrines. Yeah, I get my water for my ground. <laughs> True story. Yeah. And, you call it, and you call it your ground. Yeah. <laughs> My ground. I bought the ground. I actually totally. baked close it, but yeah. we'll get, we'll you, have a, you have a well on your property. Uh, I mean, my water is coming from the well, from the ground. Yeah, but you don't have that old fashioned like pump or pump. The tank? No, I do not. <laughs> Marley, go get the water. If you have, I'm into I'm into trying to figure out how to install one. I think that would be fun. Yeah, just get a crank well. I think if you have a well in the old fashioned kind with the bucket, and it's 2020, and you have two kids. I think it's important just to toss one of them down there or both and then save them. Of course, a flashlight? throw a flashlight down there, something nice and, um, and just get it out of the system so that they're scared of the well, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still new at parenting. So I, okay, well, that's, well, that's, well, actually, that's actually a great yeah. point because I grew up, I grew up in rural Serbia and there are a lot of wells and none of them had like child gates or anything like that. And it was pretty easy to just kind of go over and, and my grandparents would send me like, go get water or like aunt and uncle. They're like, no, oh, water is there. Go get it. And then, you know, water? yeah, yeah, for sure. Wow. And there was, they were like, we heard of stories of kids falling in a well, but like, you're not going to do that. Right. And they're like, okay, I'm not going to fall in a well. And that, that was the extent of parenting. Now you would have to have grades and like just, Small enough that you can't stick your hand through or your head through, or right, right, right. I'm checking this out. I think we're getting off tangent here, friends. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Should we bring it back? <clears throat> bring the truck back. Well, what are we bringing um, it back to? I think that's what I'm having the hardest time figuring out. Well, Laura, I think you said something which is interesting. Um, you know, you wake up with the with the, um, a slight dose of of passive aggressiveness next to your partner that. Now yeah. you have the airspace 24-7. Like, what are some of the things that are that are challenging? Oh, we're doing that. You're not asking me, you're asking Laura or me. I'm asking Laura, but you can jump in if you if you have one ready. The other day I was on a call with Brogan. Again, this is kind of Connor just downplaying my relationship with the two of you. <laughs> right, right. But technically I'm on a call with a coworker, and all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> loud speaker he's on a call one room over which is about 10 feet away with someone else completely disrespecting my phone call with my coworker. <laughs> I wish you knew what we were talking about because it was quite something <laughs> but yeah there's a lot of that um, you fighting for co-working there's actually a big issue in my house which is um, snack stealing I mm. hoard my food and always been that way. And I'm someone who goes to the grocery store like every two or three days. So this has been a new adventure for me. So I have all my snacks ready to go. And I'm usually the one working from home and he's at work, which provides plentiful snacks. Right. But you're also one of five kids. So that's understandable. Like you have to kind of fight for your, for your portions. Yeah. Yeah. So like I used to like hide food or like we used to do this thing. My mom used to buy it like a ton of cereal and if you open a box instead of like having it outward facing in the pantry you would close it and like turn it around to make it look like no one's opened it yet right 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 and all of a sudden you've eaten the entire box so like that's like what i've been doing with every snack in our pantry <laughs> just hiding and then to the point where he's like tell me what i can eat and i was like nothing like you and <laughs> you owl, eat that. you're the worst you're the worst <laughs> it's not often that I say things that are this mean to you, but you're the worst. <laughs> I, I, we clown on all of our spouses respectfully, but Connor's right. What can he eat? Go. Oh, I mean, I don't know. Connor, go to the store. He has oh. to go to the store. Weird. Are you in that kind of a household? Like, should he get his own refrigerator? Oh, that would be ideal. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> 
That would be ideal. But yeah, Connor will be like, like, like ever since I met him, he's been like, you have to work on your sharing. And I've been oh. working. I've been working hard. I think yeah. I've made huge gains. Two fridges. Two fridges. Oh. Two oh. pantries. <laughs> Well, share it equal. And they just, and they just, yeah, they have, they have, and they have like a, um, like a rolling, like almost like a Samsonite kind of code on the, on the hand. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, Laura, look, Laura, just, I just need one piece of toast worth of butter. Just can you code the door? I'm gonna get into your room <laughs> for a second. Okay, I went to my parents' house in New York, and I brought back a dozen New York bagels. Gold, right? Like that's exactly what yeah. our carb lovers love. So I bring it home, I slice them, I put them in the freezer. I went out to I went to get one the other day because I haven't had any. They were all gone except for one. Oh. Like that's fucked up. Did you no, drive not. to New York? Did you drive to New York with a screaming baby? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, he was like so like. What but can I do? here's what, the deal. What Look, can I do to make this <laughs> <laughs> He's the man of your dreams. Give him all your bagels. Give him all your bagels. It's kind of green. What do I get in return? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, that's actually a great point. Back on relationship, yeah. BG. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, yeah. What do you got? As far as as far as this topic goes, like, <clears throat> well, what is life like in the Graham household right now? Yeah. So it's um, it's um. <laughs> Everyone's choosing their words. Right. So <laughs> it's trying. Well, I, I listen for I listen to those constant I listen to those constant notes where like you and I are like chopping up on something and you said like really off the cuff, I was like, I'm something about Connor Green. You go, Yeah, well Connor Green's the worst. And I was like, Yeah, we'll get back to that. And I thought we were both kidding, obviously, and we never got back to that. <laughs> so it's like, all right, so well, what's gonna happen? Then I had the chance. I think I think partners often make group decisions in the moment of like weekend type vibes of like, hey, I'm gonna feed the kid. Do you want to do those dishes? Neither of which is a big deal. But if you've blocked off like what I'm doing right now, squatting next to the window to talk to you idiots as a work thing, it's hard to say no. I can't do either, right? And so I think and people do this with each other in any job. It's not NPHQ. It's all jobs. People say, what do you do? You do. The barista just puts coffee in the in the fucking mug. Okay, that's all they're worth. But I think like if you were to add up all the things that we do, it's it is a real job. Okay, but but right now, like to not be helping out, like if she were to walk in, if she walks in right now and I'm like, see, I'm doing NP, honey. <laughs> By the way, pointed I <laughs> pointed I pointed I have a joke that anytime I say honey, I'm definitely mocking. <laughs> the way people talk to their spouse. Because <laughs> um, you never, you never, you never call Goldie honey, have you? No, no, you, yeah, no. So, and then, then I think the really tough one is if, if especially right now with hashtag NP underscore continues, and all the tagging and all the virtual shit that's going on, which is fucking so good. A, a grown adult man, man, character, father, husband, partner roommate on the phone just it just doesn't look like you're doing anything yeah right and and so you could be fucking working on you could you know so there's a lot of that stuff kind of what laura said but maybe maybe like times 1.5 in intensity i mean it's not, it's not like we're all being exposed <clears throat> we're going from home in front of our partners doing the same exact thing that we would normally do when we were working but they see it. So, <laughs> so like you're normally at the co-working space on your phone. Right. And doing the social media stuff. But now totally. it's in Goldie's face of like, oh, so that's so that's what you do all day. Right. And so then it's like, hey, can you while you're doing and, and the answer is like, the answer is kind of yes. So if I'm sharing social in the moment, can I also microwave some macaroni and cheese? But that's a slippery slope. Then you're doing stuff. Right. And I said the reason I could never work from home is that if you're working from home with a kid who's crying, or if you're working from home with a sink of dishes, in my experience, then you've decided that you aren't gonna. It's like a, it's like you're making a statement, where, as opposed to like just leaving. Yeah. But I've always been curious, my Serbian friend. Do you just like do you just come 
the fear of God and all your people just line up and give you the, the corner right. of your cabin. Like, no one ever interrupts our phone calls with Boyd. Like there's like never like, a kid that like comes waddling in the background. Like, it's like Emily and your kids respect your career or something. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. I, I had a best wife, even though I threw her under a bus at the beginning of the call. Um, and my kids go to daycare. I think that's, I think that's a big, 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 big difference. Um, I drop him off at, 7 30 between 7 30 8 o'clock and then emily picks him up at 4 30. um the past week or so all the like k to 12 in the whole state of vermont have been shut down and the daycares are staying open for essential employees so emily being an essential employee she is still allowed to send kids to the daycare now you're, you're immediately thinking oh my god you know daycare it's it's spreading germs like i i come to the door like there's there's two doors. I, I open the, the first door that is locked all the time. I get there. The kids, they get their temperatures checked. They get um, Purell on their hands. They, they wash their hands. And then they get passed on to the teachers and teachers bring them in. So parents of essential employees can drop off their, their kids at the daycare and they're kind of placed based on age. So we do have that luxury. That's right. super, super helpful. So I can continue my day-to-day -day stuff and right. then when they come home around five o'clock then i'm off yeah off all the technology until they go to bed so that's why i don't see any kids floating around but but if if they change that essential essential employees by the way every time i hear one of you say essential employees i think essential oils <laughs> essential oil which, oil which oil. i hear that i hear that and i don't know what that like which which oils are. anyway um so your wife and the essential oils, none of my business, but the kids then get to keep going. But if that changes, I, I, I'm pretty sure that this morning show is pretty much fucking over. <laughs> yeah, or, or we'll have to get a little bit creative because um, she can work, like she can condense her hours to, to work, let's say 10 hours instead of eight hours a day and then work weekends. Laura, you're in the healthcare, you know how it works. Like you can flex the schedule as long as you kind of do the treatment. So we would try to figure out she may work weekends and then I would, you know, kind of like take Monday, Tuesday and we would figure out a way to go around it. Um, obviously, yeah. it's not ideal, but there's people out there that are dealing with way worse stuff. So like we're incredibly lucky to be in this situation. <laughs> I thought it was something really funny that I can't, I can't say. It. Hey, so um, since we've been on this, the show's begun, began since it's since the beginning of this show. <clears throat> I've gone and checked all my email addresses. I don't know what the topics are that Laura sent out. Um, so I have some. There yeah. was an no email, but go on. No, you have a text message, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, um, I thought that the three of us with, cause this will most likely be something, uh, a piece of content that some or a vast majority of our November project co-leaders in 52 cities around the world uh, consume. They might tune in, right? Mm -hmm. That could happen. They're allowed to. Fingers crossed, yeah, for sure. Well, I say the three of us um, rank them in order. <laughs> Who we like the <laughs> best. <laughs> yeah, and so. Under 20 people. Top, yeah, give your top five best leaders. Boyne doesn't <laughs> want to do it. So Boyne has to go first. <laughs> so Boyne has to go first. I'll go, mine are ready. So. <laughs> well, you asked the question, of course your answer's ready. No, I mean, I'm, I'm so, yeah. I got a degree in improv theater. <laughs> Theater improv. That's actually so, a course. You don't need to go to college for that. Like, it's kind of like when you ask people what their favorite food is. Everyone's favorite food is pizza. So you're kind of asking their second favorite food. So, yeah. boy, so it's Rankin. Obviously, Rankin's number one. For yeah, all right. of them. Yeah, yeah. So who's your favorite co-leader? Why don't you start, boy, and then we'll work our It's like a draft. We'll go ahead. We're not doing past. I appreciate wow. you trying to hijack my morning show. So we're going to not yeah. do that. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I don't want to rank people. That's not nice. We're nice people. All right, I'm back. Ranking, ranking definitely is number one. Ranking, <laughs> number, ranking one. number one. Let's do it with retired co-leaders because they have thick skin. Um, okay. Favorite? All right, let me just give you a story. Real this really happened. A woman came out to me. Uh, two weeks ago and saw my shin tattoo and she said this i can't believe i haven't told you this she goes november project oh my god i used to live in chicago and i could kind of tell where the conversation was going something andy watt was 
maybe even um, maybe the Neds or the Bangs or something, you know, something, something Chicago like. Come on. <laughs> and uh, she goes, I'm really good friends with Brent Cunningham. Oh, oh that's great. That's a great one. And she goes, Let me stay on this because you're still thinking about your favorite. Um, she, she goes, he, she goes, she paused. She goes, he is, whew, huh. and I was like, bad? Is that bad? Yeah, which way are you going? She goes, he was just, he was, and I was like, super fun, wild, fast, handsome. What was it? She goes, kind of all those things. I was like, all right, cool. She goes, my first night, <clears throat> shout out to Caitlin, no last name, brown hair, uh, Caucasian, female. Um, Assuming. <laughs> This game's terrible. Anyway, <laughs> she goes. Uh, she goes. The first night I met him, uh, he convinced me to sneak on a boat in the in the harbor downtown Chicago and steal beers off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, and that kind of set the tone in our friendship. And I was like, nice. Anyway, for those of you who don't know Brent Cunningham, he started NP Chicago way back in the day. He looks kind of like Macklemore. He runs kind of like Patty, and he has two pistol tattoos on his hips that point down toward him self towards the toes <laughs> and, then, and then he stepped down from leadership which is putting it pretty nicely and just disappeared off the face of the planet so if you have contact for brent cunningham send him this link and let him know that we're still he's yeah. still part of his family um, hey, by the way, is this a good time to? I, I always wanted to do this. By shout the way, out to sponsors again. <laughs> yeah, shout out to our sponsors. But you know how, like, you watch YouTube channels, and then at the end is like, and make sure that you subscribe down here. Like, is yeah, yeah. am I doing that right? I don't even yeah, yeah. know what I'm supposed to do for that subscription. But yeah, yeah, yeah. this will go on YouTube. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, like, down here, subscribe. I think we we nailed that now. So I just Laura, who's your favorite retired co leader? Laura, it can't be Patty. Okay, it can't be Patty and it can't be Deej, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with, um, okay, and it can't why? be Ashley. Can't be and, voice. and why, for those who don't know her, because she's very old at this point. I'm very old. So I co-led with Patty and Zip and Clayton. Those would be my top three. And, and Deej, I think, is funny. Um, Ashley Wojcik was my college roommate. So those are all off the table. So I'm going to go with a Kaylin Denali. Oh, fantastic choice. But I just want to... <clears throat> Rewind the tape a little bit. You said Clayton. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So, 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 walk us through. Walk us through. Kaylin. Kaylin. What was her name? Denali. Kaylin Denali. Where did she lead? How long did she lead? Why did you like her? Give us something. Because the new generation, people don't care about. No one even knows who this is. She's in D.C. No longer. She has great eyebrows. That's actually something I want to talk about. I'm growing my eyebrows out to look more like her. So that's kind of my quarantine goal is to just like look. All of my goals for quarantine have to do with passive hair growth. Um, <laughs> she has great hair. This is why you like her? No, the reason, those are just um, objective things. She, um, I think it's really funny when there are really, this This is an Ashley Wojcik trait too. Actually, I think a lot of co-leaders have this. They are very intelligent and their humor is smart, but they come across like, what? <laughs> Wacky, like a bonehead guy. Wacky, yeah. And so sometimes she'll walk around, she'll say, she'll kind of like, her voice will inflect up and be like, I don't know what you're talking about, but like she absolutely knows what she's what we're talking about, and yeah. she's coming up with her next joke. And I always just think that's very funny. She yeah, she yeah. led an amazing bounce. I know that bounces have become a different thing now, more of an artistic expression. Broadway production, let's be honest. Irie. She she did a she led a pop up at the top of Gasworks Park the second time we did a pop up workout for what was eventually going to become NP Seattle. Yeah. And she did this like, ooh, it was, it was quite something. I have goosebumps just thinking about it. Do you think she's listening? She's listening. She's watching this. It was, it was she'll amazing. Watch she'll watch it if we tag her. Oh my gosh. I, it was one of those like sunny mornings in Seattle and somewhere out there exists like the 360 kind of walk around the group phone. Kind of on our YouTube channel. 
Say it again. That bounce is on our YouTube channel. It should be. Yeah, man. She's she was awesome. All right, Boyan, who's your favorite retired co-leader? And you can um, take some off. You can, obviously you loved me. You well, loved you. I, I, I led I led with you, so not you. Um, <laughs> I, I guess like Deej, but that doesn't count or yeah. doesn't. No, he doesn't um, count. I'm gonna go with also a former MPDC co-leader, Daniel Metcalf. Oh wow. Wow. Um, We're quickly naming DC our favorite city. <laughs> and ready for this one? The only reason why? There's only one reason. <laughs> there's one reason why. <laughs> it's because he was the first person that had nothing to do with MP. Like there is no cross pollination. Um, he was the first one that was just like, hey, I think what you guys are doing is dope. I would like to do this. And ended up being like an all time Hall of Famer type leader, right? So I, I, I think he still holds near and dear place in my heart. Shout out, Danny yeah. Mac. There you go. Yeah. All right. I, I've got my answer. My answer is one of the, one of the oldest we've ever had. And his, oh, name, his name is Salvar. Yeah, Father <laughs> Salvar is... Raquel's father. So Raquel, who leads and created the group November Project Iceland, uh, her co-leader was her dad, who is uh, no longer her co-leader, but he is uh, kind of a long, lean, tall. He looks, I, this is, this might be a little messed up, but it's a compliment. He looks like a, a kind of a badass 40 or 50 year old trail goat man from Iceland, which mm -hmm. He's amazing. And I just remember him at um, Summit in 16, I think 2016 in Collingwood, Ontario. It felt like at any point, if he came up to Laura or Boyne or myself or my brother and said, hey guys, I'm gonna go for a walk. Like this is a little bit, this is a little bit insane, you know? And number one, I wouldn't be surprised. And number two, um, we would have been like, totally cool. You know, you're, you're, you're our parents' age, Saivar, anything you want but he was into it. And I think that it's really cool to have somebody that's really outside of the main demographic of leaders, Saivar. He's no longer leading, and I haven't heard from him for a while. I don't know if you guys have, but I think he's amazing. Saivar. <laughs> we taught him, we taught him um, rock, paper, scissors. When Zip brought up the Saivar, yeah, look at Saivar. Down a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and he's not kidding with the sweater or the hat. He's for real. <laughs> anyway, we taught him um, rock, paper, scissors for the world championships, the, the heightened hype. And he um, he learned it. And, and it was very cute. And then he won. Didn't he win? Yeah. yeah. He got put up on everyone's shoulders like Rudy and yeah. just like explosive cheering. Saivar. And, and I still don't think that he un understood actually what was happening, but that's. Oh, yeah, it was great. Um, cool. <laughs> cool. Can we be done with that? That was great. That was awesome. I just don't. Brian is like sweating. He's uncomfortable. Whereas like VG and I could just rate people all day long. Yeah, but it's just not nice because I love I everybody. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like what what is your favorite call today? <laughs> well, well, kind of question. Which is your favorite kid? And obviously, you you still have just one, and so that's your favorite kid, right? But when your you answer Marley, you give a clear answer. It, it, I know. We all know it's Marley. <laughs> Kidding. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, Emily and I have this FKA award, which is favorite kid award that literally changes every minute. And sometimes it could be Max and sometimes it could be Marley, but it's not always the same thing. And so when they're being super cute, we just FKA, FKA. We know what we're talking about. Now, Marley is getting smarter and older and she knows her letters. And so she asks, What is FKA? And then she goes, We have like a little little calendar, like um, a magnetic board on the fridge. So then she goes and writes FKA on the fridge. And I'm like, well, don't worry about it. I'll tell you when you're older, like yeah, in yeah, six yeah. months. So, mm -hmm. so I guess we need to find a different joke for that. I can't wait till she's a teenager and starts oh. smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> because 
because the easy joke would be like brings home the boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever and you have to like shake their hand and be like boyin in your living room and like that's a good story too but um for those that's of you more don't, obvious story yeah for those of you who don't know boyin boyin uh, uh like hates yeah hates a strong word but if there's a stronger word boyin despises word, he hate, <laughs> double hates smoking stuff and and then almost like and I don't want to put this on you, but you also kind of judge people that smoke cigarettes. Is that no, I don't judge, but I just don't condone. Yeah, you just think that they're bad. Um, <laughs> so that's going to be her thing. She's going to come home. She's going to like. She's going to come downstairs in the morning. Yep. She's going to have a cup of coffee. Oh. <laughs> Boy, coffee. Coffee. She's going to oh. have coffee and then the cigarette between her two <laughs> fingers lit. No, 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 no. Like she's like, no. I'm going to work, Dad. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Describing my nightmare. Right. <laughs> and then her boyfriend picks her up on his Harley. <laughs> uh, she'll, be, she'll be a good kid, so it'll be like hidden. It'll be hidden stuff. He'll be like he'll find like a like a Dunkin' Donuts receipt in the bottom of her bag or something. Like it won't even be that obvious. It'll be like it'll be like she and he come here before you head out. Give me a hug. She smells a little bit like cigarettes, not a lot, just a little bit. Yeah, like over a gum, which is even worse. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Heavy perfume, but then a little bit of tobacco. <laughs> oh, so fucking terrible. Uh, what else can we do to make Boyan uncomfortable? <laughs> you know, make Boyan hate his daughter. She's four years old and really hate her. As, as a bubble gum, and now you're, I'm going to see you. I'm like, yeah. You could have just. You know, cigarettes. Where are hiding the cigarettes? <laughs> you could have just kept ranking leaders. We wouldn't have had to go here, but. Yeah. I know. Whatever. All right, Laura, you had a good question that I, I liked, and I would like to pass it on to you. What are the things that you're doing in the time of lockdowns and quarantines and stay homes that you usually wouldn't do? That, wait, what was the question? Like, what? <laughs> so much time. No, it was the one that... Um, or embarrassing? Embarrassing things that you do when no one is around, but now you can because everybody's on top of you. Uh, so I was just thinking like, what are you doing? Like, like there's like, I don't, I, I mean, I don't really know. It's just kind of a question for you guys. Well, mine is pooping with open doors. I feel you like that's poop? something you've always done. You poop with open doors? Yeah. In your with house right now? Yeah, for sure. And it's so awesome. <laughs> it's, I like that. You can it's hear everything. Yeah, it's like, kind of thing, but it's, it's never going to be like you know in the horror movies when kind of like you in the bathroom or you're in a shower and kind of like did I did I hear that? What what was that? Boy, and I, feel open, like this never is, I feel like this is um, you overcompensating because you went from a small or a condo to a big house. So now you're like, and now I must poop with the doors open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. I've been pooping with doors open because now you need to the kitchen. <laughs> Dude, if yeah. you want to, if you want to really lay it down, you should just start pooping in your front lawn with the bears. Yeah, that that. What are you doing? Hey, you know what? You know what's crazy, Boge? Earlier in this call, you referred to your house as a cottage. It is a cottage. Okay, so let's get into that because you guys are my two adult friends that are like a little bit ahead of me in life. And oh, sorry, uh, log cabin. It's a log cabin. Log cabin, not a cottage. A cabin. So, Laura and Connor this past summer bought their house, their first house. But then, like, Laura, you used a different name for it. Not just a house. You called it a something. Well, it's a condo because it's a two-family home. And we only – it's it's a point five. We bought half a house. Oh. So then yeah. at what point do you get to have that, like, monumental first home owner? They give you the keys. Like, did you get that? Boy, yeah, you do get that. In a condo counts? Yeah. I, I think so. so. But, boy, and when you moved into your place in Alston, did you get that thing too? I guess what I'm saying is like, when is it? When does? When are these things that big homeowner house thing? When do they happen? Yeah, like, like whenever you buy a house, house. Your big ass mortgage. <laughs> yeah, right. Whenever you buy a house and and through your mortgage you pay for another house. Right. So the condo is going to count. The condo counts. The condo counts. I right. don't know. Can we talk about your hair and how you should cut it? I would go. I would go get cut, but I'm not. I would pay. I would pay someone to we cut it. Right. Passive now. hair growth. It's gonna be a thing. I'm growing out my eyebrows, my hair. 
Maybe even my maybe even my armpit hair. Laura, you know? I think I think you should explain. You. I think you should explain what Aaron Brisky uh, did did to you the other day. I know, really manipulated my brain. <laughs> One day, Facetime me and Boyan, and they're talking about knockarounds. Okay. Shout out. Put them on. And I was like chasing my toddler around the house, and I, I see the phone. I'm like, oh, okay, answer it. And I'm in a sweatshirt, and my hair is up, and I kind of look messed up. <laughs> yeah. I was drunk. It was 3 p.m. No, but so I, she goes, she looks me up and down on FaceTime. She goes, oh, okay, so this is what you're going with? This is your quarantine look? <laughs> I was like, well, yes. <laughs> so anyways, the next morning I woke up and I took a shower. <laughs> and I put my hair in a braid. And so I sent her a video. And within minutes, she sent me a video back with her hair in a braid. <laughs> yeah. I got she in, poisoned uh, my milk one day. Totally. I got a little bit of that like um, defensive brother vibe. I got her on the phone with her the next day. So you talked to her two days ago. I got I talked to her yesterday. No, I think you, it was yesterday. I bet she, you talked to her like a couple hours yeah. ago. Yeah. So then I, I said to her like, dude, um, what's the look in Newport? I go, is it is it what I think? Like, do you have a lot of white clothing in your closet? She didn't even miss a beach. She's like, yeah, I do. Yeah, and I was like, what about the pearls? Are you wearing a lot of pearls? And she goes, I have them on right now. So like, no matter how, she just, she's, uh, unbeatable. she's unbeatable. Impenetrable for for. Yeah, she has like a yeah. bunch of like sailing paraphernalia on her walls in yeah, her home. she had a bunch of buoys. She had buoys in the corner oh, of her room. Buoys. I was like, yeah. okay. okay. Nautical, her whole life is nautical themed. And she's from Texas, which yeah. is so <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing to pass the time i guess we're all calling brisky um, yeah i think i got a text from her someone else was included on it so let's talk about the show i let's feel like we'll round it up soon but yeah. let's talk about the future of the show we talked about bringing other guests on such as aaron brisky yeah mm -hmm. so what is the goal how often are we going to release this these episodes i, I don't know daily Weekly? Every week until Boyan's preschool is closed. <laughs> <laughs> and then the show is slashed. The budget is gone. Yes. And then let's let's reconvene on Monday. I think the most important thing, Boyan, and you and I talked about this uh, at length when we we're getting ready for the show. Um, <laughs> if, you've made it, if you've made it this far and you have any questions about November Project, about NP Continues, if you... If there's something you want, if there's a story you want to tell, this is like the, you can, this is the mailbag. You can, you can direct message us on Instagram or through social media. You can email the website, right? Boyan, you, you were interested in this? Uh, I'd say just, just comments in the video. Comments in the video. Yeah. Um, but I, I thank you for, that was a nice little uh, dish from Chris Paul over for. Alley-oop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they call that an alley-oop. <laughs> an alley-oop. <laughs> To lose, they call this hello. Yeah, yeah. um, so I'm glad you brought up MP Continues because um, there is now a page on NovemberProject.com, November-Project.com, that is called MP Continues, which lists all the links to virtual workouts. So there's a bunch of leaders around the world that are hosting virtual workouts, even though they're canceled. Um, they're doing it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Some of them are doing it every single day. And you can go and see what the what the schedules are, what times are. Um, I know someone actually joined, like from East Coast, joined the Pacific uh, workout because they wanted to sleep in, which is awesome. So, um, yeah, basically there's like 30-something links up there uh, of the – leaders of the cities from around the world hosting workouts. So more than welcome to join, hop on one of those. Yeah, that's a good point, Bo. Because you could, you in theory, you could just see the, um, you know, the IG story or or go to the individual cities, um, social media or the page on theverproject.com, you know, and you could do these workouts in the PM. You, know, you could do them whenever. And I think, right. I think one, of the, one of my favorite things about what's happening right now with NP Continues is that so many people are reaching out saying, I've always wanted to join and I'm not anywhere near November project. And I think that's awesome. 
not to be too serious, but I think that's awesome. And so people are jumping in. I also like when people are just getting out on a long run or doing something in their basement or whatever, and, it, and maybe it doesn't match up or maybe it's different than NP or different than the assigned workouts, but they're still using the hashtag and they're, and maybe you guys can comment on this, but I feel like these days, these odd days, like I'll be out on a run and I'll be thinking about all of the NP P, as if, as if it's almost like that Strava thing. When I used to do all my Strava runs, I used to think about Paul Leak looking at my workout. <laughs> 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 it, would, it wouldn't make me go fast. Well, sometimes it would. Paul Leak and um, Andrew looking at my shit. Um, and so nowadays, I feel like it's like we're all kind. I know it's cheesy, but like the accountability thing. Like I feel like yeah. we're, kind of, we're all kind of like seeing what we're doing. Um, so it urges people to share shit out. Yeah, I think that's going to be interesting to follow just to to see what the, the the habits that you created from having kind of like a schedule, right? Workout schedule. In some cities, it was once a week. In some cities, it was three times a week. Um, maybe you were doing things outside of MP, but having that schedule get disrupted and then trying through these virtual workouts to bring a little bit of normalcy to see how many people are are jumping on it and they feel like it's useful or they're just like, Nah, I'm I'm happy just to sit on my couch yeah. and bed. Well, yeah, I also love that in our 30s and beyond, uh, there's so many people that are just kind of doing what they've always done, and then there's some people like both of you who are doing new things. <laughs> Boy, and this year has gotten heavily into downhill skiing at like an obsession level that I used to be involved with the surf culture in San Diego, mm -hmm. and Laura. And I'm sure you're going to talk about this at some point. Kind of a mom's hockey team. <laughs> I never started. I can't talk about it. The virus has been tough on that league. But yeah. but, but when people say, like, what are we going to use this time for? We used to say we we're always so fucking busy. And those of us who still are busy, that's fine. But what if you could pick up a new thing, right? What if – and I see people juggling. I'm doing a lot of reposting of people juggling. I think that's cool. Like – or a handstand or something like, do your fucking workout. That's great. And NP continues. Perfect. Keep us all connected. But like, I don't know. Like, let's all learn Swahili. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah, I am very, I am very into this whole reset button thing. Because Laura, you could, you could get a, you could get a stick or borrow one and Lysol it and then get a puck and just go out in your shared driveway and just work on your handles. Yeah. Your and hand that's what I'll do. And you could FaceTime with Andrew. And he can give you pointers. Okay. And go. And he'd be like, no, he'd be like, change your wrist angle. And then you would. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This but, is the time of the show when we cut this shit off. <laughs> but, but come come summit. Laura's gonna have the best snapshot in all of Cambridge. Is it snapshot or slap shot? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know hockey, but is it snapshot or slap shot? <laughs> uh, I think it's a good time. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> uh, subscribe <laughs> here. <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>